to show you I started my starter again and this is my sourdough starter and now this is day three I just want to show you what it looks like uh, just gra yeah, grab one of those. okay I just want to show you look at that in there do you see it isn't that beautiful and it's getting all bubbly now this is done with no yeast at all. The only yeast that is in here is the yeast that's around our home. That's the only yeast that's going into this mixture. All it is is flour and some water. And I started this, uh, this is going to be day three. And I'm doing it slowly because I'm still not ready to make any pizza or bread because I have plenty of that. So I'm feeding it slowly rather than doing like half a cup at a time i'm just doing it slowly and when i'm ready i'm gonna have a nice amount where i can use some of it and leave some behind and start feeding it again if you're making say you're making your sour starter and you uh, you're not ready to make any type of bread yet and you find you have way too much what you could do is like put a lid on it put it in the refrigerator thank you erica uh, put it in the refrigerator and then you can um, take it out the day before, feed it a little, and uh, the day after you're able to start making your bread. Uh, so it's very easy to make. Now I'll show you because, like I said, I'm doing it slowly. I'm in no hurry. Uh, my counter is clean so I could put this down. Or maybe I'll use my paper this way. There we go. I use equal amounts. Like I said, I'm in no hurry, but you could smell it. It already started to smell a little sour, and you could tell it's working because it bubbles, and eventually it's going to really bubble on you. So, so I'm using all-purpose flour. I'm not using bread flour, but if you have bread flour, that's even better because when you do make your, your sour starter, it's going to really make that bread nice and elastic -y. You could always put a pinch of vital wheat gluten in here and that'll give you that extra elasticity in your bread. But for now, all I'm doing is just making a starter with just simply my flour and water. And then if I want to have that extra, like I said, extra gluten, I could always use a little bit of gluten in my, in my mixture when I add this to it. So I'm okay with it. I just want to check my, oh, sorry about that. Here we go. This water was already boiled before, so it's nice and cool. And I'm using the same amount of water to my flour, to my starter, sorry. It's one of the easiest things to do. Now, you say, why do I have to make sour bread? Well, sour bread, not only is it delicious, um, it has a lot of benefits because it is fermented. It's better than adding just plain uh, yeast to your bread um, because it's been sitting and fermenting for a long time. So it's even that bread is even better for your gut. And you don't have to just use it for bread. You could use it like if you're making pizza dough. Uh, like my daughter says, you could put some in cupcakes. You don't have to put a lot of it, but you could put a little bit. It has that nice little sour taste, almost like if you're using... Um, uh, butter like a buttermilk it really adds a nice richness to your recipe so that's how easy it is to make a sour sour starter and this is like adding yeast when you're using uh, also if you're going to use uh, you want to make a bread and you want to eat it right away like you don't have time to wait like overnight for the bread to rise then I say put a little bit of yeast in it. You still have the benefits of your sour starter. So that's okay if you want to make bread the same day and you have no patience in waiting. But otherwise, you don't even have to use uh, yeast that you buy at the grocery store. All you need is some of this and patience for it to rise. I know of some bakers that make it rise. Like for two days, it's like rising. They punch it down and it comes back up again. So... It all depends on your patience if you are making bread just with your sourdough starter. But was that easy? No. All I do is cover it. I have a little cloth here, a little elastic, and I let nature or my environment do the job 
to this uh, to this mixture. So that's how I make my sourdough starter. Very, very easy. Come tomorrow, I'm still not ready. Uh, I might have to change jars. I might have to get a bigger jar, but it's a good thing because then I'm using a small one now because it's easier for me to mix it and everything. But once you have that larger jar, then you can consume some of it and feed your starter again. If you're feeding it once a week, I say put this in the fridge if you're not using it. If you say, well, you know, I'd like to be able to go out for the weekend or I'd like to be able to go on vacation, no problem. Put a lid on this into the refrigerator. You're back home on Sunday night, take it out, put it on your counter, feed it, and then the day after, do whatever you want to make. If you want to make pancakes, if you want to make um, a cake, a banana cake, if you want to make... Uh, a bread if you want to make buns if you want to make pizza you've got your starter but this could stay in the fridge a long time and if you see that the water separates that's not a problem all you have to do is mix it up sometimes you might see like almost a darker color water uh, that's just the alcohol in your starter you give it a mix and it just goes right in there but remember you have to consume and add consume and add but for now, I'm, cons uh, I'm just adding a little bit at a time so this way I could get a nice batch where I could actually take a nice cupful of starter and put it in my bread mixture. And this is also a great way of doing the zero waste where you don't go out shopping for bread and come home with a plastic bag uh, just by uh, making your own bread. You make your own bread, you don't have to bring home that extra plastic. So it's also more of a minimalist life where you don't have to bring in a lot of the stuff that's really destroying our planet. Now, if you have bags at home, you can take them all, put them for recycle and start without a bag. But then you need to have something where you could put your bread in because you can't just leave your bread in a cloth bag because what it will do is dry up really fast on you. It's not the end of the world. You could always uh, grate it and make breadcrumbs, but... You're going to be a very busy lady or busy man always making bread because it's going to dry up way too fast for you. So you would need either a Tupperware or um, a glass, a huge glass jar where you could put your loaf of bread in. And this way it stays soft for you because you're getting rid of your plastic bags, right? I have plastic bags. I have so many plastic bags. It's kind of scary. But I wash and reuse them. And I'm going to show you. Like I said, I hate to just throw them away when I can use them at home. The only time I'm going to throw them away, uh, this was hanging from the corner. It's still a little wet there, but I could simply dry that with a little towel. Um, now, I hate to like get rid of these when I can still use them around the house, either to put uh, a bowl of soup in there and close it and it's covered. Um, if I bring home some vegetables that I don't want them to dry up in the refrigerator, I'll slip them in the bag because when I go shopping, I use my um, I use my bags. I'll show you. Now these I bought a long time ago. I have these ones where I put grains and I put flour in this type of bag when I go do my shopping. The next time I go out shopping, I'm gonna show you. Um, I have these cotton ones that are like netted. I also make some, which my daughter took all of them, so I don't have any to show you except for the ones that I have on my website to sell. Um, so I do have these, and this is what I use now when I go shopping. So if I'm coming home with vegetables, I don't want to leave it in this because it's going to stain my bag. Uh, so I have the bags that I have at home because today we find out that half the stuff that goes in our recycle bin ends up in the garbage anyhow. So it's like so frightening. Uh, but like I said, I do have these bags. I wash them. As you can see, this one's still wet. Um, and I reuse them as much as I can. If I see there's a little tear, sometimes I'll even put a little tape on it and keep reusing that bag. I'm really doing the best I can to make as little garbage as, you know, as possible as I can. But like I said, if I bring in vegetables and my bags are clean and they're dry, I slip my vegetables in my bags and then they go into my refrigerator. And like I said, I wash my bag after, the, after it's done, hang it to dry, and then when I go shopping, reuse the same bag. 
I do my best to reuse the same bag and not bring in bags. Even my husband's getting the hang of it. If he goes shopping for bagels, he says, Connie, can I have your bag? He'll take one of these, fill it up with bagels, and then we put our bagels in. Here, I'll show you another bag. This is a bag that we continuously use as long as it's good. And if I see a hole, I'll just tape it and we go shopping with this. So the bags I have are the bags I had. My daughter tells me, get rid of them Ma, and get yourself some nice jars to put bread and stuff. But I still haven't found containers big enough for me to put my stuff in like breads. Because if I... If it's not big enough, my bread's going to dry up and I don't just want to buy plastic Tupperwares because then we're back there again. But I'm thinking hard how I can fix this problem. So I'm working at it. And here is another thing I'm doing because of zero waste. I just want to put this aside. Um, I make my own sake. Uh, I should have some recipes of sake, uh, sake recipe up on the internet. And again, you're going to see it's in a bag because this way I can leave my tap loose and if it uh, if it overflows because it's fermenting it goes into my my little plate but I'm gonna just show you I've got some raisins in there because I'm kind of jazzing this sake up a little it's not what you the traditional sake this is Connie's way of doing things always trying to be as creative as I can what I did have in here I might have a piece or two or probably got it all out uh, the skins of tangerines uh, it has rice it has the skins of tangerines I put some raisins the other day um, a little bit uh, no a cup of sugar this is uh, I think a two liter is this a two liter Erica or is it one and a half? I don't know. Could be a one and a half, two liters. One of my biggest mason jars I had. Uh, but the next batch I'm going to make, I'm going to give you the exact, exact measurements that I'm using. As you could tell, it's still bubbling. Uh, but it has, at the bottom, it has the rice. It has all the tangerine skins uh, that we washed. I'll show you. Uh, I have a bag full. Let me just push this over. And these are dry now. There's, sorry, these are dry. Uh, there's um, tangerines. There's grapefruit. Uh, what a, it gives it a nice sour taste. But you got to like the sour, guys. If you don't like the sours, I say just take your skins and throw them in your compost. But I love that taste of sourness. And um, it almost has like a lemoncello lemoncello taste but it is made with rice sugar uh, skins of our citrus fruit and uh, some grapefruit juice and some lemon juice and I let this ferment now I started this on January the 23rd I'm not sure if you can see it January the 23rd and it already has a very alcohol taste. It's a little, a little early for me to taste it, but I just want to see how it's coming. Right now, it's also very cloudy, but that's okay. If you still want to drink it cloudy, that's okay. And if you want, you wait till the settlements get to the bottom, and then it's going to turn out as clear as water. Wow, really good. You could taste the sake in it because it's made with the rice. And I um, added the delicious, I added the delicious raisins. That's adding even extra sweetness to the drink after the sake ate up the sugar that was mixed in here. But like I said, if you want this recipe, leave a comment below. Say, yeah, Connie, show me when you make your next batch. And I'll make a video for you guys how I use leftovers, uh, like I call this zero waste, because with the skins that you would normally throw out, you're able to make something that you can share with your family. I mean, if you don't drink alcohol, I say forget it, don't even bother, skip this part. Uh, but if you have people over, and this is nice if you, um, 
if you have people over you could put your your glasses in the freezer and you could even put a little bit of maple and then pour some of this on top and you can serve it to your guests when they come it's just you know not for you to get drunk with but something to enjoy if you have family or friends coming over i know my mom used to make her own liquor when she was alive and she was young and i remember it clearly those days i would go downstairs and i would see her she'd be putting bananas and rice and potatoes in this huge ceramic um almost like a bathtub and her and her sister-in-laws were there one was dumping bags of sugar and the other one was like cutting up the bananas another one was throwing in other stuff and there was lots of fruit and she would make this most beautiful beautiful bright pink liqueur it stuck to my head it stuck to my head that all i want to do is make delicious liqueurs or drinks like i said not to get drunk but just to enjoy once in a while so if you want to see how i make this put a comment below say connie i would love to see how you make your um your citrus sake and it would be my pleasure to show you when i make my next batch for now i'm just going to cover this because i still want this a little stronger you could taste the alcohol in it already but i want it just a little stronger before i bottle it and this is the bag that i use so if no fruit flies could go in you don't want to spoil your drink so i do keep it tied up sorry guys my hands are right in your face i don't mean to until i get the right way of setting there we go this is going to go right off to the side of my counter and you see because it's it's fermenting the bag swells up but i do cover it with this so that it doesn't see any daylight and i have it off to the side of my counter and that's what it looks like right now it's still like i said a little cloudy but you could also if you want you can filter it to the point there's a lot of going back and forth pouring out the top part and leaving the settlements at the bottom until it becomes super super clear and it gets very strong sake gets very strong so you could even dilute it with a little bit of fruit juice that's really up to you how you want to do it but it's just a nice little something to have a toast like i'm doing right now i toast to you all and tell you how much i love you guys okay so i'm drinking early today <laughs> okay so we'll put that aside my daughter made me this beautiful matcha that i'm gonna enjoy and she made a delicious cashew milk which is very simple hey erica it's just one cup cup of cashews for yeah a very cup. simple one of the simple ones and when you make things with love guess what it always tastes delicious okay so i'm gonna take a sip of this mm, that, oh wow very good erica that is a very good matcha tea okay so this is our starter i told you what to do now back to my daughter's my daughter's milk that she made so we've got she strained the milk and we were left with pulp so i says okay what can i do with it so i'm going to show you what i'm doing with it now this is all pretty much like zero waste because when you do things at home less things to throw away right so the pulp that she pulled out of when she made the milk i said you know what we can throw it in a bread we could throw in a, i says how about if we try making a cheese out of it and that's what i'm trying to do it's a small cheese because she didn't have a lot of pulp but look at it if this comes out good i'm going to tell you exactly what i did with this pulp and it's mostly pulp guys it's not that i added any extra nuts i did add extra stuff to it but if this comes out good you could actually make cheese just by adding a couple of things to it and then wrapping it up and you have extra cheese for whenever you want to make a little wrap or something you cut some of this cheese and it goes in there so we're not wasting anything guys you see how easy it is to be able to be as zero waste but we could do our best to make it a lot better on our planet 
and you just feel better because you don't have all that extra junk that's in your house right everything's in glass everything is in um paper uh these i have i'm not throwing them away so i'm gonna reuse them until i can't use them anymore but i've had them for so long i don't think when they're i think i'm gonna die before my tupperware is due but do your best guys so i'm gonna see you next time when i make my sourdough bread or pizza i'm gonna see you again if you want me to show you how to make cheese with leftover pulp and it's firm I just want to show you and that was the pulp of my daughter's milk and I also have um, which is almost done it's already strong enough but I did I'm gonna show it to you anyhow okay this is a melange video today so let me go get it okay you saw me I was making uh, cheese I was making a camembert uh, with my leftover uh, oat milk pulp and look how beautiful now I did mess up when I it looks a lot better on this side uh, when I was flipping my cheese I end up pulling some of the some of the white mold that was encased I had the wooden skewers which was living leaving such beautiful lines but when I went to pull it out it pulled out even the mold from my cheese so we're trying to get it remolded eventually it's going to be all white but oh my god i wish you could smell this cheese this is the one that i put truffles in and i put the leftover pulp of my oat milk if you could only smell it yeah i gotta get rid of some of that moisture in there because making this type of cheese doesn't want a lot of moisture and if you see that there's uh, a little bit of moisture you just get a clean dish towel and just dry it down like I could pick this up my hands are clean guys and just pat it down where it's wet because you don't want that extra moisture because this cheese doesn't like it but oh my god I wish you can smell this cheese I can't wait to open it I probably will make a whole video again in a day or two just to show you when I cut it open uh, but this cheese is the bomb.com how does it taste I have no idea yet but how does it smell it smells like freaking good so here we go so this one I'm making a video for you this if you want me to show you how I make it with leftover the leftover pulp of the cashews I'll show you if you're interested if you're interested on how I make my my sour lemony sake let me know and I'll see you in a future video when I'm making you my sourdough bread that I'm gonna keep feeding every day like I said I'm gonna feed it only a quarter cup a day because I don't want to make way too much and then I'm gonna be bombarded with sourdough because I'm not ready to make it because I have lots of bread that I have to still consume so I'll see you in a bit with this one and if I don't have enough I'm just gonna use a little bit and it won't be as sour as when I will put the full amount but it's gonna be good anyhow but very easy to make guys this is easy you have to do it not only because it's gonna taste great but the benefits it gives you is like crazy these are the same things the benefits these uh, fermented cheese is very good for you the alcohol even though it's fermented I'm not gonna say it's a good fermented drink for you to have but it's nice to have once in a while so I'm gonna say I love you guys try and be as zero waste as you can and try some of these recipes and let me know guys right under the comment if you want me to share some of these other things that I'm playing around with and I'll be glad to share it with you so I'm gonna say I love you and I'll see you in my next video for more videos like this make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rossum Kitchen give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends